Hey YouTubers, and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super discussion video. I wanted to talk today about something I feel like a lot of people are overlooking about episode 100 and the real impact that that episode is going to bring to the rest of the Tournament of Power. And in order to talk about this particular subject, I have brought with me again Mr. Ninja Star Man. What is up? Say hello to everyone listening. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's really fun being on Mark's channel once again. <laughs> these discussions that we do are always entertaining. I love seeing your guys' opinions as well on these topics. We can have a good time talking about it, and so can you. So, what's the topic for this video? <laughs> like I said. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, seriously. So, basically, what is the main impact that we got from episode 100 that's going to impact the rest of the tournament? And a lot of people, I don't think, are thinking this. A lot of people are sleeping on this idea, as MJ would say. It is Kale created depth to the arena. She actually made it a, a hostile environment. It's no longer a flat surface where you can't really hide, you can't really dodge or block or anything with with debris or anything else like that. She literally in her rampage when she first powered up and started shooting beams everywhere, she destroyed everything and made literally canyons and mountains and stuff of debris that other people are stepping on. If you see the next episode preview for 101, you see that like that is actually going to play a role. You know, you got some depth, you got people standing up and looking around. And you know the cool thing about this? I'm also thinking just off the top of my head, you remember how the new intro or the new outro ends with everyone basically on a canyon and it doesn't look like the world of the void, but now it kind of looks a little bit like the world of the void if, you know, the darkness clears. Exactly, and it kind of shows that, you know, as we saw earlier, you know, it was created by the Grand P Priest. It seemed to be very strong, very durable, but then Kale just comes in here, like, erupts everything, and now it's kind of like a battle site, you know? Like, one day you'd see, like, let's say, freaking Vegeta versus Goku in the Saiyan saw. It looks almost kind of like those canyons right there. And what you were saying right there about Ending 9 and its similarities, that could very be, that could actually really be interesting because we never really saw that coming. But when the Z Fighters are pretty much standing on, you know, those like edges and stuff it could definitely like show maybe a little bit of foreshadowing towards what actually did happen in the show kale was wrecking everything and now the there's no like a, no longer a straight slope it's all like jagged and everything like that so mm -hmm. it's definitely interesting what they added in right there i think it's really cool though honestly because it does one of the things i really like about that is when she's destroying everything when she's literally I guess blowing up the entire arena, she, I guess, takes the arena with her. She finally goes, like, way up, and she's above everyone, and she's just, like, shooting off all these beams, and we get to see the Pride Troopers, even though she does take out one of them, we get to see the Pride Troopers all standing up on those hills, and Goku and everyone else is in the debris, and it really does give us kind of this idea of just how much more these people are, just how more daunting the Pride Troopers are, or someone like Kale is, when you actually show them so much tower, like, they're towering over the people that we're supposed to be rooting for, and it really does add that extra layer of depth that we're going to actually need going into this tournament and plus it gives us something a little bit better to look at one of the things i've really not been i guess a huge fan of going into this tournament is it's just chaos and and it's chaos and there's not a whole lot to look at basically in order to hide everything what they've been doing artistically or visually is creating dust and smoke everywhere explosions in the background and stuff to give the background actually some depth because they put it in this world of the void where you have a flat surface with complete nighttime sky so it's just these characters who are bright and vibrant and you know they're very colorful interesting looking people but there's nothing behind them to give that kind of it doesn't make it pop so with the tournament ring destroyed completely and you know you have these highs and lows mountains and valleys and all this other stuff it does and it's going to start making the tournament look that much more awesome when they fight I couldn't have said it better than, <laughs> frankly, like, it definitely does add this little depth, like what you were saying, because if it was just, like, a completely flat slope with, you know, a dark sky, and then, you know, sure, we get these cool characters, these interesting designs and everything, but if there's no background, if there's no, like, 
there's no like environment around them that makes it really interesting then it just kind of gets boring and then what's the point of the background like you could literally put a green screen over over them and it would look like the exact same because that's how plain it was and then you know once it actually ends up getting destroyed adds a little more variety they have to use their environment maybe like like you saw what goku was doing he was kind of like hiding under the rubble for a little bit when you know kale was transforming adds kind of a lot more variety to the environment like what i was saying it's really interesting that they added it in there right there that's all i'd say what are your thoughts no i love i actually love that and one of the things i would say is well, it, it might help going forward, especially when we have characters like Frost who are trying to be very crafty. I mean, when he hit Krillin off of the tournament ring, he used like a smoke bomb or something or a key blast to create smoke so he can get away. Now he has this cover. He has this area which he can sneak around in. And not just him. There's a lot of people in this tournament who are unknown right now. I mean, we have a lot of people from Universe 4, 6, and 2 that we haven't really actually seen very much of you know we still have people that they've never they've given us nothing so i think that that's actually kind of cool it does create a little bit depth people can be hiding in the shadows people can be hiding behind rubble sneaking up on people more so than they could in a completely flat surface it's going to start creating a little bit more of a panic mode because remember guys this tournament ring is huge it's giant we are in a situation where it's so chaotic and so many people are fighting at the same time that literally Goku can be standing nowhere. Like, standing in his place, even though he's covered by smoke or explosions, and literally be face-to-face -face with one person and fighting that one person with no one giving a crap or being close enough to give a crap about what they're doing or who they're fighting to actually stay, like, get on them. And I think that that's really interesting because once this all boils down to, like, four people or three, five, ten, even just, like, a remote number of people to the 80 that we started with, there's going to be some where are they now situations, I think, and that's going to be really exciting for everyone who's watching this show because it's going to create some kind of attention there. Yeah, like it's almost as if it's like some sort of hide and seek type thing where it's not just like you see everyone. Okay, there's Goku right there. There's Vegeta right there. There's, you know, Jiren. You you could you don't know where they are because of the fact that there's all this rubble. There's all this destruction going on and everything. And it's hard to follow because every moment you see like, okay, this is an area where not many people are actually fighting. It's kind of, it doesn't really seem like anyone's there. You're sitting on some rubble. Next thing you know, someone was hiding under there this whole time and knocked you out what, without you even noticing. Like, it's wild. Like, you have, it, it makes this, uh, everyone in the tournament be a lot more alert. Like, even though they might not be paying attention to it right now and just treating it as if, like, everyone's out in the open, someone could be sneaking on you right now. Like, it's kind of interesting to think about because we never really like it's definitely just changed the how the everyone interprets the tournament they're like oh okay there's nowhere to hide everyone's gonna have to go to face me but then not people are able to hide people are able to go from one area to another people are able to use their rubble use the rubble to an advantage or something like that i definitely like what they're doing there it adds a lot more variety and I, like what you were saying earlier going back i really like that ending nine it referenced that or maybe maybe it was just coincidence who knows but if it was foreshadowing that was very brilliant right there yeah i mean i i completely i completely agree with that and the last thing i'd really like to say here i know a lot of people are going to be sitting there going well or not a lot of people but at least some of them really are going to be sitting there going like you know there wasn't like there was depth in the background with the explosions and the, the debris and the smoke and everything that was caused by the fighting. But this is really the best case scenario. Like I said, you have to add that tension and there's going to be a part of this tournament when there's not a lot of people fighting at the same time. And theoretically, there should be no reason for that smoke or those explosions to be there. And it will slow down. I, I really hope that that's what that's leading to is it's going to slow down and it's going to become kind of I guess, like, oh my god, like, where is everyone and all that other stuff. So, anyway, guys, with that being said, I want to hear all y'all's thoughts and opinions. Do you think we're onto something here? Do you think it's not going to matter in the long run? Or are they going to repair this at some point? I mean, who really knows at this point? What are your thoughts on the whole Ending 9 situation? Was that kind of a allusion to what we're seeing now or some kind of a hint to it? Uh, do you think that this is a good idea for the 
end of the tournament or how the tournament progresses or do you think that they should have kept the flat surface please make sure to go down to the description section below and hit that link to go check out mr ninja star the guy makes some really awesome content you should go definitely check it out because you won't be disappointed anyway guys don't forget to like comment and subscribe to this video hit that bell over by the subscriber button and make sure to have a good day it's been real